<sighs> well, hello everyone, and welcome to another Richard Head Longbows video. Why am I making arrows outdoors? Well, it's because it's too bloody hot in my workshop. Yeah, and to make a serious point, if you're making bows and arrows in this sort of heat, and some of you don't live in the UK, where we're used to minus temperatures, you live in hot countries. Tillering, hmm. That bit where you're bending the bow, that can be dangerous, or more to the point, damaging to your bow, to the materials, if you're doing it in extremes of heat. Uh, so yeah, I advise working early hours of the morning if you're going to be doing tillering or perhaps later on in the evening. So that's why in middle of the day I'm a mad Englishman sat out in the midday sun, burning with no sun cream on, And uh, but thankfully I've got a nice fizzy drink, not a sponsor. Mmm, zesty, refreshing, mmm, just what I need. So why is excess heat bad for the stave? Well, it's only really bad for the stave when it's being bent. So the tillering process is the largest amount of work you're going to be doing on the bow from when it's, well, say like this shaft, a straight stave, and then training it to bend. So if you're training it to bend when it's extremely hot, there's a good chance that the bow is going to take an excess of bend, it's going to stay more permanently bent than you'd perhaps like. So yeah, if you can avoid working in the heat, then do so. And you might say, well, what about shooting? Well, yeah, the same could be said as well. Um, if you're shooting on a very hot day, it's likely the bow is going to lose some cast. It's going to lose some power um, because it's going to start taking a set. The materials are going to be warmer and more pliable. Um, but we really are talking about excessive heat. Perhaps you might want to let the bow down between ends. Um, that might help get you some more cast throughout the day. So it's something worth bearing in mind. And for your sanity. Do you want to be working in stupid heat? You'll probably go nuts start doing crazy things like me anyway enough moaning about the heat we should be thankful it's a nice day let's go up in the workshop and see what I've been working on this week in my series of videos entitled what's happening in the Bowyer's workshop this week and this week we're looking at something that's gone a little bit wrong yeah let's go and have a look as you can see back up in the workshop here I've been working on some medieval arrows and this stave now we've selected the materials, glued them all up, and cut them out so it's now a stave. This is a triple laminate stave. So it's made up of three pieces. We've got bamboo on the back, and you, in fact you can still see some of the glue lines there from where it was strapped up. You've got pakia forming the centre laminate, that sort of sherbety colour, and the belly there, the top there, is dagame. As I say, a typical triple laminate that we use. But this one is actually fairly heavy, it's quite a large bow, it's uh, required to be fairly heavy weight. And this shot just shows you the, the length of the bow, the full length of the stave I should say. And I'm moving down a slightly closer shot to the handle itself. And I'll actually just show you the sort of size of this, uh, this one, a comparison if I hold the handle there with my hand. Gives you some idea, it's quite a, quite a large bow this one. Now one of the arts of gluing up staves is getting all those pieces nicely glued together with no thick glue line and no gaps as this one is. It's rather nice. But it's not until we do the cutting out, once we've done all that gluing, that you can sometimes see problems or faults that were hidden deep inside the wood. And as this penciled circle line there is, is circling a crack. I don't know whether that's showing up very well in the footage. Just use my finger there to point it out a bit. It's quite hard to see. Now we've got a few options. You could either cut that out or glue it up. So I'm going to use some thin glue here and just glue that line up. Now what I can do when I get to the roughing out stage is hopefully that line will disappear. Hopefully it's just on the outside there. You can see it a bit more clearly now, now that glue's run in there. Hopefully you can see that. So what I'm going to do next time in the next video is do the roughing out and see if that line disappears. And then we can, if it has, we can move on to doing the tillering and hopefully it won't cause a problem. If it's still there after I've done the roughing out, then we may need to think about putting in a bloom, which will mean cutting out a piece of wood, gluing it in and then re-roughing it out. Hopefully we won't have to do that. We shall see whether the glue's done the job. Anyway, folks, like, subscribe and join us for the next video if you can. And we'll see you next time and we'll see what happens with that stave. 